students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a fantastic week so far. Students, in this class we're looking at IELTS Band 9 speaking uh, example for part two. And the topic of this cue card, because this is a little presentation that you have to give in the exam, and the topic will be talking about a grocery store. Could very well be the topic of your next test. Welcome, Fuang. Hi, Chayani. Hi, Patek. Nice to see many of our members joining in on the class. It's fantastic. This is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch and I encourage you to watch because we will have speaking part three coming up next for our subscribers um, and our uh, viewers. Everybody will be able to join uh, that chat and part three is kind of a continuation of part two in the speaking section. So whatever part two is, uh, part three will be connected to that and in fact part three questions next class will be about shopping for food which is not a surprise. Uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. For the general IELTS visit us at gieltshelp.com. Both of those websites have loads of help for you. These websites are the textbooks and tools that we use for these live classes, students, uh, and we will use them today as well for speaking. Uh, this is our Academic IELTS website here. You can click this big red button to join now. It says join now. <laughs> it's a one-time payment. You get lifetime access, you get uh, practice exams, interactive courses, videos, app for your phone. You get lots and lots of help. Doesn't cost a lot. We're an IDP, British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. And uh, we have a new discount code for you today uh, coming from our latest video. I'll share the link with that. It's full, uh, sorry, over here, yeah. Um, it's full nine, F-U-L-L nine. -L use that discount code to get a 10% uh, discount. You can use it on our general IELTS website as well, gieltshelp.com again. Just click this big red button. It's worth it. Everybody who gets it says, hey, that was a good idea. All right. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Romelia. Nice to see more members joining in as we're getting fired up to start this class. So, um, yeah, use the discount code FULL9. Uh, this is coming from our latest video. We just released a new speaking uh, example mock interview um, with a candidate from Madhya Pradesh. She does a really good job in her speaking answers. Uh, that's the video here. Any members see this video? We released it just before this class, 30 minutes earlier. So. Um, just enough time to watch it. I think the video is about 14 minutes in length. I'll put that into the chat. So there it is. Um, and that's a good video. Uh, the speaking topic in that one for part two is a modern building off the top of my head. And um, uh, for speaking part one, it's talking about water. So um, drinking water and so on. So it's a great video to watch. The more topics, the more English, the more communication, the better. Um, so yeah, uh, apps, academic IELTS help, general IELTS help, get the apps from your app stores, link them to your web accounts. What we want to do is we want to set you up with a complete IELTS learning environment. So when you get our websites, when you get our apps, when you join these live classes, you have a lot of tools to really improve your English and your band scores. All right. Um, if you have a question, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Um, Sarah, I still didn't see the email from you, by the way. I'm not sure if you sent it. Uh, I wonder if um, 
there's some kind of a filtering issue where maybe one of our filters is uh, putting your emails into spam or something like that. So let me know if you sent an email, Sarah, because I was looking for it um, and I didn't see it. So make sure it's adrian at aehelp.com. And um, if you don't hear a reply, make, try a different email address. For some reason, you might be getting filtered on our end. I'm not sure. It's kind of strange though. I didn't see it so far. Okay, so I had a quick look at our emails this morning. So send us an email if you have questions, just like I was telling Sarah to do. Um, students, our schedule, uh, we've got a new schedule coming. Um, so we have classes today. We've got speaking uh, part two and speaking part three. And then tomorrow we'll have a Discord uh, class on IELTS prep that will be a task two writing class. It will be a little bit different style than what you're used to seeing in on YouTube. So check that out. I will put the link into the chat. If you go to Discord IELTS prep and check that out, you can join that class for free. And then next week um, from the 6th, we've got lots more classes uh, to see our schedule. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell button, get notifications um, so that you know when all of these live classes are happening. And our video again um, that we just uh, released um, is this video here. So uh, once again, I highly encourage you to uh, check out that video when you have a moment. Okay. Um, Romelia, uh, Discord is a piece of software. It's, well, it's, it's unique. Um, it's kind of like Messenger or WhatsApp, but not really. Um, you have to just download it. So just type in Discord software. You download it, you have to create a profile. Um, if you need help with it, there's usually people on Discord that can help you set it up. Um, and then there's different places you can go on uh, Discord, like chat groups or servers. And this one is called IELTS Prep. It's a group of about 5,000 students, 6,000 students that uh, have this uh, shared community. So that's where we will have our task two writing class tomorrow. Um, maybe ask a couple. I think Sarah was in that um, uh, Discord class, right? Sarah, I remember you. Um, so you can ask uh, Sarah for a little bit of help in the chat while I get going on IELTS speaking part two. The cue card. IELTS speaking part two. Um, it is the most important part of your speaking interview because it has the biggest effect on your overall band score, okay? So, in some sense, okay? So, uh, this is just an important tip for everybody. Uh, speaking part two is really important because it has the biggest impact on your overall uh, speaking band score. Okay, so usually most students do a fairly good job in speaking part one when they introduce themselves and then they talk about their hobbies or sports. And it's speaking part two where the interview starts to become more challenging because you have to plan your answer. It has to be put together in an intelligent and clear format, in a structured format. It's not the kind of speaking that we do every day, even in our own language. So, um, you know, people don't come up to you in, um, uh, and ask you in Romanian or um, French or uh, Swahili and say, uh, hey, can you talk for uh, one to two minutes about the uh, grocery store that you go shopping at and why you like going there? and what happens there so it's not a it's not the kind of speaking that we're used to so we have to practice it even if you have really good skills in English it's a good idea to practice part two 
And then, of course, as you will soon discover, part three is connected to part two. So if you do a good job in part two, you have a much better chance to do a good job in part three. If you do poorly in part two, then part three will become more challenging. So uh, part two is the foundation for part three. Uh, do a good job in part two, and you can do well in part three. But the opposite is also true, right? However, do poorly in part two, and part three will be more challenging. It'll be more difficult to make connections, come up with good ideas, uh, stay on topic, and so forth. So uh, make sure to do well. Uh, students, this is a speaking class, so speak and repeat. I know I keep saying that, but that's what you need to do. Okay, so when I say sentences, uh, when I use new words, repeat these. Okay, so copy these. All right, um, so students, in this class and the next, I want to do a lot of speaking. I want to give a chance for our viewers uh, to do speaking, especially our members in this class. So let's get to it. Let's go through this cue card and answer. We'll do a sample answer together. And then, um, and then we will uh, give a chance for uh, students to try speaking um, for real. Like We'll hear the students. Okay, so step one, uh, read the questions carefully, okay? So here we go, IELTS speaking part two, the examiner will say, okay, that is the end of part one, we will now continue with part two. For this part, I will give you a card with questions. Um, or I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read these questions. Think about your answers. You can take notes in this one minute time if you wish. You have your note paper there, you have your pencil, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Talk about a place you like going to buy groceries. <clears throat> okay, you should say uh, what this place is. Okay, uh, where is it located? What do you usually buy there? Why do you prefer to go shopping for food there? And uh, what would you change about it if you had the chance? Okay, um, sure, so um, now, it is a good idea to read these twice just so that you know you have to answer all of these questions. And then your next step, step two, is to identify what category this is. Are you talking about an object, a person, a place, an event, or an idea? And the reason why is so that um, uh, you can uh, Think about the structure, okay? So I'll show you what I mean, okay? Step two, identify that you are talking about a place. So here, obviously we're talking about a place, it's a grocery store, okay? And uh, let's do a bit of refresher here. Um, so uh, members, uh, when I'm talking about a place, what should I include for my listener so that they have clear understanding, so that they understand very well uh, what we are actually dealing with here? So, okay, Sarah says, talk about its location. Yeah, absolutely. So location would be first, right? Where is this place? Okay, what else? Appearance, yeah, what does this place look like? course, right? It's very visual. It's very physical. It's a grocery store. Um, we could talk uh, maybe about its history a bit. Chayani, the origin is not so important here, but history, you might be, you might mention 
a brief part of its history. If it's a museum that you're talking about, for sure, or like a castle, a famous historical building, grocery store, eh, maybe not so important, but you could say a sentence. Okay, Fung says, the attendee, so who goes um, to this place? Yeah, sure. And then um, the experience, yeah, activities and experience, yes. Okay. Now, you also want to identify the tense, okay? So the tense that you're using. And in this case, um, it's a grocery store that you like to go to to buy groceries. So you're going to use the present tense, the present perfect, past, maybe past perfect, right? Because it's a grocery store that you go to. Um, so you're using past and present, not so much the future, okay? Sometimes students think you should talk about the past, the present, and the future. Not necessarily. If you talk about the future, in many cases, you're going off topic, okay? All right, and then the important step three, think about some options. Think about two to three options for your answer. And keep in mind that this may not be your first idea. Okay, so <clears throat> when you're thinking about a grocery store that you like going to for groceries, okay? Groceries, not clothes, not electronics, but groceries. Groceries means your foodstuffs. So it means like your bread, your rice, your corn, your produce, your meats, fish, your uh, drinks, your pop, your chocolate bar. Okay, so think about those. So where do you like going to? Now you want to be specific, okay? So you don't want to just say local market, but you want to give that local market a name if it has a name. Okay, so local, uh, so sorry, I should say be specific. Okay, now here's a really important tip everybody for today. And I'm going to show you this with today's cue card topic because it's a very good one for this. Is choose the easy path for IELTS that gets you a high band score. Okay. All right, Fuang says West Side Groceries. Okay. Sarah, what is your local market called? All right. Give me some ideas students. So what are some grocery stores where you like going to? Marseille Flea Market. How about this, Sarah? Marseille Farmers Market. Okay. Masala says Fresh Mart. Okay. Good. Um, just out of curiosity, um, Romelia, do you have uh, Tesco in uh, Romania? I know that um, there are Tescos in a lot of uh, different European countries. It's one of the big um, supermarket chains. Okay. Now, um, here's an interesting question. Uh, do people um, like going grocery shopping in big uh, supermarket chains? Like one of the big ones in US and Canada is Walmart. Okay. It's, a, it's the biggest supermarket chain. Um, 
They're a very, very big company. Yeah, Sarah says Walmart. Do you have Walmart, um, Sarah, in France as well? I'm curious. And do you have Tesco in, um, in uh, Romania, Romelia? There's a reason why I'm asking this, and I'm going to show you exactly the logic here. Okay. Okay, so Mega Image and Care For. Yep, and Sarah says, somehow in France we have it. I don't know which countries have Walmart and which don't, Sarah. I definitely know that uh, US and uh, Canada have lots of Walmart stores. Um, I know that the Auchan is another big one in uh, Europe. So, uh, okay, now, um, and Masala says in India we have D-Mart, which is kind of like Walmart. Yes, that's right. Okay, D-Mart, sure. Okay, um, now, for a lot of people, arguably these big supermarkets like Walmart, D-Mart, Tesco, they're maybe not people's favorite places to go um, shopping for groceries, but for the um, aisles for this cue card, where do you like to go to buy groceries? These would be a good choice, why? So even though, let me, let me ask you this interesting question as we start off today. So even though uh, many people would honestly say that big supermarket uh, chains are not their favorite and big supermarket chains we're talking about stores like Walmart or Dmart uh, or Tesco are not their favorite places for groceries these make an excellent uh, choice to answer this card uh, for or these questions for the IELTS. Why? So why would I say that? Why would I say talk about Walmart? Don't talk about the farmers market in uh, Marseille or uh, in Bucharest or in um, uh, New Delhi. So don't talk about the farmer's market. Talk about Walmart, talk about Tesco. Why, why do I say that? Okay, what's, what's my logic here? So why would that be a better choice? So in that one minute preparation time in your head, right, you're spinning ideas and you're like, okay, where do I go to buy groceries? Okay, I go to the, uh, market, um, the farmer's market, I go to Tesco, I go to the small corner store and I really like the food that I get at the small corner store and I really like the food that I get at um, the farmer's market because it's more fresh, um, because it's local, um, because it's delicious. But I'm going to talk about Tesco or I'm going to talk about Walmart. Why is that a better choice and you guys are probably like Adrian that's crazy why would you say that why would you say you like going to a place that you don't necessarily like going to so what's the reason what do you think why would we do that members why would we choose Tesco why would we choose Walmart okay number one because it's easy for the examiner to sympathize with you. So when you talk about um, an answer or an idea that is familiar for the examiner, it's going to be way easier to explain it and to talk about it because the examiner already has an idea. They already have a picture of Walmart or they already have a picture of Tesco or Dmart, right? So 
most people have seen one of these big stores during their lifetime. So when you're talking about it, it's easier for them to imagine it and therefore it's easier for them to understand what you're saying, even if you're not being that clear, right? Does that make sense? So if you choose a, an answer that the examiner is familiar with, like talk about your favorite restaurant and you talk about McDonald's, just fun. It's a funny answer because people would be like, McDonald's? Are you kidding? Um, but yeah, I know it's not. Again, examiner does not care about the truth, but the examiner is going to be familiar with McDonald's. And when you say um, this place has like a golden kind of M sign, they actually are called the golden arches. But it, the examiner will understand you more just because they know it, right? If you talk about um, like a unique place, like a, a specialty delicatessen that you go to uh, just down the street, it will be a lot more challenging because the examiner has no idea about that place or that store. Does that make sense? So choosing answers where the examiner can sympathize with you easily, it's a good answer, okay? Also, it's easy to talk about lots of information okay so when you're talking about tesco or walmart dmart Auchan, tons of information lots of uh, familiar vocabulary if you talk about the small uh, delicatessen owned by um, mr anderson it's going to be more challenging to describe what is there what you buy there okay so easy to talk about lots of information right that's the other reason that it's uh, good to choose this, okay? All right. So uh, let's go with uh, Walmart. Okay, we're going to go with Walmart, but Walmart, again, is just a big supermarket chain like Dmart or like Tesco, okay? So uh, our choice will be Walmart. For the example, when you practice, you can make a different choice, okay? And um, we're going to take some notes. That's the next step here. So location, um, let's say it is a um, 10 minute drive. Um, let's say 15K from home, okay? So we don't need a lot more about that. Uh, appearance. Uh, what does uh, Walmart look like? Again, this is another reason it's good to choose Walmart because the appearance is fairly easy to describe. So, uh, big blue building, Chani says, yeah. Maybe it's like 2,000 uh, square meters of retail space. Sure, big blue building, 2,000 square meters of retail space. Um, Masala says four floors. Yeah, sure, why not? They're usually at most two, but anyway, yeah, doesn't really matter. Okay, yep, yeah. air conditioned. Sure, so there's climate control, it's cool, it's comfortable, yep, yeah. okay. Um, big box Okay, so it's a big box shaped building usually. Yeah Okay, big parking lot Sure, okay, that's enough don't get caught on the appearance for too long just uh, maybe remember appearance should only be about 10 15 seconds, right? Uh, same with the location, five seconds, right? So we don't spend a lot of time on these parts talking, okay? All right. Um, and then uh, who goes there? And so who goes to Walmart? I 
could say thousands of shoppers, right? We don't need to get into too much detail. It's a grocery store, so lots of different people go to Walmart, okay? Uh, no need to uh, get into details. Chani says housewives. I'm, everybody goes to Walmart. Housewives, dads, moms, kids, okay. Um, and activities. So what happens at Walmart? Now this is where you have to be um, a little bit more so attendees also maybe five seconds, so not a lot here, okay. And then you spend more of your time here, like 40 seconds, okay. So what kind of activities happen there? So buying uh, groceries, yeah, okay, so food. Yeah, Sarah, it's like a giant Aldi store, sure, or Costco would be another one, right? So, okay, so what happens there? Now, this is where you want to think quickly, right? So buying food, obviously, I mean, that's why we're talking about it, but what else? Uh, Chayani says scanning the price, yes, but think about, um, here is where you want to think about reasons you go there to shop. Okay, so what kind of activities can happen at a grocery store that encourage you to go there to shop? Okay, Sarah says shopping. Yes, but that's just the outside of the bubble. Okay, Sarah says cheap prices. So let's say regular discounts, right? So you can um, find regular discounts, special deals, sure. Uh, what else? What other kinds of um, actions or activities um, might happen there? Okay. Okay, f um, so find uh, needs in one place, yes. Okay, so think quickly. Okay, how about customer service? All right, so good customer. Yeah, there you go, Masala, helpful staff, right? Good customer service. So the activities is where you want to um, think about the ideas a little bit more. Good, good service, yes. All right, um, so uh, maybe a fun center for kids, right? or activities for kids. Sometimes big supermarkets will do that as well. Experience. This is where you want to spend lots of time. 40 minutes, or not 40 minutes, 40 seconds. Um, all right. So your experience, fresh food, cheap prices, right? Okay. Um, Sarah says maybe even some free items. Yes, sure. Okay, Sanantha, very good. Easy parking. Yeah, parking can really be an issue, right? Okay, good. Now we have all of the information um, that we need to give a good part to response. So step number five, okay. Now you see why Walmart is good to talk about. Okay, so members, do you kind of like, yes, you, you see why even though in the real world or in reality, it might not be your favorite place to go and, um, and shop for groceries, it's a good choice for your IELTS part two. So I want everybody who's watching to really think about this, that in IELTS part two, it's not about the truth, it's about choosing the easiest path to a high band score and choosing a big supermarket like Walmart or Aldi or Tesco or D-Mart would be a better choice than talking about your local delicatessen just because it's easier. It's easier to express yourself, okay? Now I'm getting some thumbs up there and everybody's like, okay, yeah, 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 I see why I'd rather talk about this than talking about the little tiny mom and pop store around the corner. Okay, Gunkai Ren agrees as well. All right, good. Nice to see it. Right? So, IELTS, you're there for business. You're there to get a good band score. 
You're not there to teach your examiner. Plus, your examiner, honestly, will probably never visit that little grocery store that you're talking about. Okay? So, step number five, come up with your first sentence. Uh, using your answer and the cue card topic. Should be very easy. Okay? This shouldn't take you a lot of time. All right? So... My favorite place to go grocery shopping is Walmart or whatever. Let's make it Dmart. Doesn't matter. Okay, it's just one of those big supermarkets. Okay. Oh, I gotta make this smaller. Nobody said I was partly off the screen here. There, now I'm on screen. Okay, Sanantha says, yes, I see this now. All right, so. Uh, and then we get into it. So members, give me some sentences based on what you're thinking. And I'm sure, you know, we all have ideas about what these uh, supermarkets look like, where they're located. So just give me some sentences. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to start putting together my part two response and I'm going step by step. So first I answer the question and now I'm going to talk about the location and about its appearance, okay? Yeah, Domenico, just choose the biggest grocery store, right? The one that's most like a D-Mart or something like that, okay? Um, but Domenico, also, if you're, you know, well, it depends what version of the IELTS you're doing. You might not actually be doing the IELTS in a small town, okay? Uh, Masala says, the most convenient place for groceries that I go to is Walmart, almost 20 minutes from my house. Now, Masala, be really careful. Um, it says where you like going to, okay? So make sure that your first sentence reflects this like going to. It's not asking you the most convenient, it's asking you where you like going to buy groceries. So you have to tell the examiner you that you like going there. So my favorite place or the place I enjoy going to for groceries, okay? So, really pay attention to the cue card topic question so that you can reflect it in your answer. Same thing, Fuang. So Fuang, you're saying a grocery store that I usually go to. Usually you go to, it doesn't mean you necessarily like it, so make sure you say that you like it, okay? Yeah, Sarah, exactly. So I have been shopping, not I have been being. You don't need the uh, progressive present perfect there um, in the passive because it's not a passive, right? You're actively shopping, Sarah. Uh, so I have been shopping for groceries at Walmart, okay? So you can use the progressive present perfect, Sarah, but don't use the passive progressive present perfect because you're actively shopping, okay, for groceries. Sanantha, um, my favorite place, we don't say most favorite, Sanantha, because favorite includes the meaning of most, okay? So do not say most favorite, just say favorite. Most favorite, You in rare cases you will hear that, but it's kind of awkward English, so just avoid it, okay? So my favorite place to go grocery shopping is D-Mart. Sure. Uh, this is a massive um, grocery uh, store uh, located about 15 kilometers or a 10 minute drive uh, from my home on the uh, east side of um, Mumbai. Sure. Okay. So again, location, just a brief 
brief uh, couple of sentences there. Um, it's great to go shopping there because um, it is easy to park and free. We can say firstly. Firstly, it is or it's great to go shopping there because it's easy to park and for free. Okay. Um, the building is a large uh, box uh, shape, blue in color, and has about 2,000 uh, square meters of retail space with dozens of aisles uh, filled with not only food but many other household uh, needs. Okay, so all I'm doing here is, again, just what we did in our notes. So what is this place? Where is it located? What does it look like? Um, thousands of customers Um, parents, elderly, children, uh, walk through the D Mart doors daily for both the great tasting food and cheap prices. Okay, I'm just I'm making it up. Think about it like you're a D-Mart or a Walmart commercial, okay? All right, let's see what you're doing in the chat, everybody. So like I said, I'm, you know, I'm always looking at the chat. I want to see what you're doing, okay? And when I give you feedback, pay attention to it, all right? Um, Chani says, I have enjoyed going to Walmart for purchasing groceries for the past 10 years. Chayani, add um, a time indication. So Chayani, when you use the present perfect, I have enjoyed going to Walmart for purchasing some groceries. Um, you should add some time frame, like um, for the past 10 years. Okay. Domenico says, my favorite grocery shop is the convenience store located in the middle of my town. What's the name of it? Domenico immediately introduced the name so I can identify it as a unique place. Um, when you're looking at these cue card questions, everybody, it's really important that you give a unique answer, okay? Uh, the IELTS examiners expect a unique answer if you keep your um, answer general like I go to the supermarket in the middle of town your score isn't going to suffer it's not going to be as good as it could be because it doesn't sound like you're being original you need to really be specific and original Okay, and when you're being more specific, you're using better vocabulary and better grammar also. All right. Um, Ren says, a lot of nice groceries pepped around my community, among which Walmart is one I like going to the most. No, Gunkai Ren, do not do that. Uh, first of all, nice grocery stores. It's an awkward... Um, way to describe a grocery store saying that it's nice what does that mean doesn't sound natural okay um, and I'm not interested in lots of grocery stores I'm interested in your favorite ones so be specific Ren remember what I keep saying be specific right uh, Sarah's asking does everybody have Aldi in their countries I don't think so Sarah so um, for example in Canada no we don't have Aldi okay 
Uh, Hungary has Aldi, and a lot of European countries have Aldi. I wouldn't be surprised if Romania had Aldi, but uh, not not here in uh, North America. And I haven't seen it in South America either, so I haven't seen it in Mexico or Costa Rica either. Um, all right, uh, Masala says, This store is about 20 kilometers from my home, which takes me about 15 minutes drive by car. Um, what's best about the store is that it's massive. It stands on a 2,000 square meter lot. Okay, Masala, just a couple of corrections to grammar and language use, but otherwise pretty good. Sunantha says, I like to buy some groceries from Tesco Supermarket, which is just five minutes from my apartment. This place is open 24 hours. Very good, Sunantha. I, am a, I have been a member for two years. So I get special discounts. That's very good. Yeah, membership. We didn't even talk about that, right? So another reason I love DMART is because I often get special discounts using uh, my membership card just last week I uh, bought a 10 kilo bag of rice at half price okay yeah giving specific details that's what gets you high marks okay um, good I love the uh, writing I think that you know a lot of you are feeling really comfortable with this topic which is really good and especially when you've identified a good topic okay so now uh, let, let me look at my notes um, and especially I'm looking at activities and um, and I'm looking at my experience okay all right Every time I go to buy my uh, produce and <clears throat> vegetables, uh, my produce, it is fresh and the customer service is great the butcher at the deli section is always smiling and gives me the best cut of meat sure All right. So don't forget about that happy customer service. The store is kept uh, clean and air conditioned so that I am uh, comfortable during my visit okay hi Baljeet welcome to the class nice of you to jump in all right <clears throat> Masala says not only does it have three floors filled with different uh, types of groceries um, but the staff helps me find what I need quickly without getting uh, confused and frustrated yes very good masala again pay attention to grammar right okay so at this point i want to make sure that i'm answering all the questions on the card so here's an important tip again students um, about um, 70 80 seconds into your speaking okay it's very important 
So after, let's say, yeah, maybe even 60 seconds, uh, check the card to make sure that you are answering all the questions. Okay. So what the place is, yeah. Where is it located? Sure. Um, what do you usually buy there? Um, okay, I might say a little bit more about that. Why do you prefer shopping for food there? I answered that. And what would you change about it if you had the chance? So maybe I need to answer this, okay? So let me know what you want to change about this store if you had the chance. So I uh, usually uh, buy um, bread, rice, uh, potatoes, ham, and uh, other groceries there. And um, given the chance to change some aspect of DMART, I uh, would include a section uh, dedicated to organic uh, foods. Unfortunately, um, it is difficult to uh, find organic uh, foods at DMART because they are um, all over the store and not in one specific location. Okay. So that's what comes to mind for me right away. You might think of something else. Okay, maybe you'll say automatic checkouts or more cashiers. Could be a good one too. Okay, or that it's open longer or opens earlier in the morning so you can do shopping earlier in the morning. Lots of different uh, parts of a store that we might want to change. All right. Uh, Masala says the store is fully air conditioned and the staff is very care, uh, very helpful. Uh, it's The store is kept clean and hygienic 24 7. Okay. Masala, simplify. Don't use words like infrastructure. We're not talking about building a skyscraper or a city. So you don't need to use the word infrastructure. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> Baljeet says, I don't have anything to do nowadays, so I was on YouTube. I remembered it's Saturday, so I thought I'd jump in. Well, we're always happy to have you here, Baljeet. Uh, students, just because you finished doing IELTS and you get a great score. Baljeet, by the way, did you get your score? How did you do? We haven't heard from you. I'm sure uh, some of your uh, cohorts and your peers here in the class would love to uh, learn of uh, your results. I would. So if you're comfortable sharing them, let us know. Okay. Um, I didn't see an email from you. Oh, you don't have them yet. Aha. I figured you would have probably shared them if you had them. Okay, everybody. So this is our part two uh, response. Um, and we can conclude it. Nevertheless, DMART is definitely my go-to uh, grocery store and I visit there at least a couple of times uh, each month uh, to fill my fridge. Fridge is short for refrigerator. Okay, so Baljeet announced on 6th or 7th of October, not September, right? Um, okay, so that's my concluding sentence. It's good to do a concluding sentence in your speaking part two so that the examiner knows that you're finished. Just make sure you check the questions and that you answered all of them before you conclude, okay? So tip, um, it is a very good idea to uh, end your part two with a concluding uh, sentence that is similar but not the same 
as your first sentence. Uh, to tell the examiner that you are done. Um, make sure that you check the questions first to be 100% certain that you have answered uh, all of them, okay? Yes, Baljeet, it is October. Indeed it is. And we have Thanksgiving and Halloween coming up in this month for us here in Canada. We have uh, Thanksgiving a little bit earlier than the U.S. It's because Canada's colder, so harvest is earlier. All right, um, so let's do this. Let's um, speak and repeat, everyone. So let's do this together. Okay, uh, so... Here's the original question. Talk about a place you like going to buy groceries. Um, what this place is, where is it located? What do you usually buy there? Why do you prefer to go shopping for food there? Uh, what would you change about it if you had the chance? Here we go, everybody. So your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. My favorite place to go grocery shopping is D-Mart. This is a massive grocery store located about 15 kilometers or 10 minute drive from my home on the east side of Mumbai. Uh, firstly, it's great to go shopping there because it's easy to park and it's for free. The building is a large box shaped blue in color uh, warehouse and it has about 2000 square meters of retail space with dozens of aisles filled with not only food, but many other household needs. Uh, thousands of customers, parents, elderly children walk through the D-Mart doors daily for uh, the great tasting food and the cheap prices. Another reason I love D-Mart is because I often get special discounts using my membership card. Just last week, I bought a 10 kilo bag of rice at half price. Um, every time I go to buy my produce, it's fresh, the customer service is great, the butcher at the deli section is always smiling and gives me the best cuts of meat. The store is kept clean, it's air conditioned, so I'm comfortable during my visit. I usually buy bread, rice, potatoes, ham and other groceries there and given the chance to change some aspect of D-Mart, I would include um, a section dedicated to organic food. Unfortunately, it's difficult to find organic foods at D-Mart because they're kind of all over the store and not in one specific location. Nevertheless, D-Mart is definitely my go-to grocery store and I visit there at least a couple of times each month to fill my fridge. I know that was fast and I know that was a little bit challenging, but I'm sure you did a good job repeating. So double thumbs up. Um, and if you know if you had trouble, do it again, right? So uh, this um, video is recorded. Uh, you can come back to it. Uh, the time is 58 minutes. So you can check it again. Listen to me say this answer again. Notice how I make it really natural by the time I um, do this kind of repetition part. So. Try to copy more of what I'm saying instead of just reading, okay? And you can go sentence by sentence. So when you listen and you repeat, go sentence by sentence. If you're having trouble, turn the uh, subtitles on um, on uh, YouTube and it'll be a bit easier, okay? Chayani says dizzy. <laughs> All right. So again, practice again and again, but that should be how it sounds at band nine. That's your natural speed, natural language, right answers, right detail, okay? All right, um, so uh, let's, let's practice this with some of our students. We've got um, half an hour to practice, which is lots of time, um, especially for our members. 
So grocery stores, uh, here we go. Um, for volunteering everybody, go to our website. So we're going to actually speak and talk to each other. And to do this, uh, go to the website, aehelp.com. Uh, log into your My Student account. Go to Student Partner Speaking. Enable your microphone and message me. You're going to see me as master. You'll see a little blue envelope. Um, click on the blue envelope and write, I want to volunteer. Okay, here we go. Um, so this is gilshelp.com. This is aehelp.com. Again, uh, we use these websites all the time for our live classes. So if you have the chance, join the premium package. It's that red button that's just right up there. Okay, um, and we go into your My Student account or My My Student account. And then in the student account, you have the uh, student partner speaking right there. Okay, you've got lots of other goodies like computer-based practice tests, online course, lesson videos. And if you want to book a full speaking practice with me, you can do that by clicking this yellow button. Okay, but right now um, we're going to click this blue button. And when we click that blue button, we get into this page here where we have Yuri, we have you, we have Zizi, Ritu, Sinantha, Jiwen, and many, many more. Um, this is a members chat class, so members get first chance here. Uh, that's why it's good to be a member of our uh, channel. But if members don't volunteer, then others can too. Okay, Romelia, I know you're really excited to try this, so I can see you're very quick to uh, message me. Um, are you ready? Are you ready to tr do this? Not try, right? We just, we do. We don't just try, we do. All right. Hello. Hi, Romelia. How are you? Not bad, thank you. Okay. All right, Romelia. I know you're pretty excited about this topic uh, based I on the. You mm -hmm. did a good job today. You have high expectations of yourself today. That's good. I like it. I like it. I always have. <laughs> but unfortunately, <laughs> I don't always succeed. I but see. But this is another another story. <laughs> don't be so hard <laughs> on yourself, Romelia. Don't be so hard on yourself. Okay, um, Romelia, then let's do this. I will start you off and... Um, and then uh, make sure to answer all the questions on the card. Here we go. So um, that is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I will show you some questions on a card. You will have one to two minutes um, to answer. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Uh, talk about a place you like going to uh, buy groceries. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Okay. I know that uh, as a consequence of the globalization, we are spoiled for choices when it comes to, to do shopping generally. Um, I might well go to the supermarket, uh, a chain supermarket, but uh, I have another option now. Uh, no sooner had I moved house, uh, that I came across uh, this uh, nice local supermarket called uh, Delight. I think uh, the name uh, is uh, itself meaningful, which is a small uh, family business. I think the entrepreneurial uh, spirit runs in, uh, into family. And uh, what I like here is that I can feel this uh, small town vibe. And uh, I feel like we are actually... Uh, Mm -mm, tight knit community because everybody knows each other and can share ideas about their day, things like this. Uh, above all, uh, the products are um, fresh uh, and various, from uh, staple food to delicacies. 
and uh, the donors uh, make uh, always uh, a point of uh, satisfying the client. What could be a downside is that uh, is not uh, the largest uh, place could be cramped sometimes, but uh, even so, uh, would be my uh, my place uh, of choice where uh, I will do my shopping, my uh, weekly basket. Okay, your time is up. I'll stop you there, and uh, we will now continue with part three. I will. Uh ask you some uh, questions related to your response and um, connected to this topic of part two. Uh, let's talk about buying food. That will be coming up in the next class in about an hour. But uh, for now, let's focus on your answer. All right, Romilly, you went the risky route of choosing a <laughs> local <laughs> market. Yeah, an example. I, I was thinking that uh, just uh, the other day I popped there and buy the ingredients for baking a cake but yeah never mind <laughs> <laughs> all right well first of all i commend you for I, it i'm a cambridge student I, i'm still not used to 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 support my argument with example because in cambridge exam they don't require this <laughs> right and uh, you know i i commend you for um trying the difficult path but it costs you so it does cost you um it's it's clearly more difficult uh, to discuss i mean you're talking about your local family owned supermarket um, first of all you have to be very effective at describing what it is and where is it because i have no idea so in my mind you have to paint me a picture and you said exactly and and, and yeah. you said for example like it's small and it's cramped but you didn't actually tell me at the beginning how small it is. So I don't really have a picture of this store. Like, is it a small corner store size of grocery store? Or is it a yeah. larger family owned kind of store where, you know, there are at least a dozen aisles of foods and Yeah, uh, I wanted produce? to say that I live in a gentrificated area. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is around the corner. It is convenient for the, the location because I don't have to drive. Uh, or something like this in order to yeah so yeah. again so it's the more difficult choice in the beginning you said okay i know that as a consequence of globalization we have a lot of choices for shopping i might go to a chain supermarket but i have another option now um, i came across a local supermarket named delight it's a very long introduction and it kind of starts to create confusion in my head right from the beginning of like okay what's going on here so are you into globalization and big stores or are you now actually telling me that you're not into that you're into the new store that you found okay so where are we going with this so this is where it becomes more challenging and again you have great vocabulary like you use the word bad pipe. <laughs> i know i'm bad pipe. No, it's not bad five. I would say it's at least a 6.5 to 7 uh, for sure. But with your vocabulary and fluency, Romilia, you should be pushing for a band 7.5 to 8 for sure. Okay. So in the real exam, choose the easy path. Choose the easy path. Okay. All right. Okay. So, but, but it's okay. Um, we have an idiom for what you... Uh, tried in this it's go it's called going against the grain to go against uh, the grain um, this is an idiom which means um, to um, try the opposite uh, approach from the um, from the popular uh, method or the popular way so don't go to the beaten track. Yeah. <laughs> um, so to go on the beaten path, right? It means to go on the same path where everybody else goes, to go on the pe beaten path. But in, um, t the better idiom here of what you were doing is to go against the grain. Um, I could explain what where that comes from, but it's too long, too much for now. But uh, it just means to go the opposite direction of the kind of the popular approach, right? So um, it's okay to try that when you're practicing for the IELTS, but in the real exam, do not go against the grain. So go with the grain, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, Romelia, keep it up, and we'll talk again later. Thank you. Bye. All right, that was Romelia. Uh, and, you know, that was a, it was a good example by Romelia of 
the challenges of talking about that small deli that's um, just down the street. Um, and there's a lot of unique vocabulary that comes into that situation as well. Um, okay, like um, community spirit would be a collocation there. So my local deli has strong community spirit. I come across my neighbors and familiar faces regularly and that uh, makes the shopping experience uh, very uh, pleasant and social, right? So you, you get into some very tricky thoughts and vocabulary with that as well. All right, um, let's give Patek a chance here. Um, it's good to see Patek back. So let's give Patek a chance. Patek, are you ready? To give this a shot, I know Patek was here the other day uh, for some reading, right? Okay. Hi, Patek. Uh, hi, Francis. Okay, I can hear you. All right, Patek, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Uh, how are you? I'm doing pretty good too. Thank you. It was a little bit hard getting up this morning, but <laughs> but I've had my coffee now, so I'm okay. All right, Patek, are you ready to give this cue card a shot? Uh, yes, yes. All right. Um, now, um, definitely one uh, step that Romelia did really well is she had a beginning and she had an end. So I knew when she started, when she finished, and she kind of paid attention to answering all of the questions on the card. I think she kind of um, missed one question. Um, do you know what question she missed from this card, Patek? So these are the questions I that are... I have a problem with actually understanding Romelia because of the sound, so I'm not really sure. Okay, well, let me spoil it. So this question, I maybe she said it, but I didn't really catch it. It was, what do you usually buy there? Okay, so I didn't hear Romelia say like I usually buy all of my fruits and vegetables there like bananas, oranges, grapefruit. Um, so I didn't hear that kind of a specific uh, piece there. So this is just a reminder for everybody that um, uh, you have to really make sure that you clearly answer all of those questions. Romelia says my daily basket of food. Yes, it's a, yeah, you want to be more specific. That's right, Romelia. Okay, um, so always take at least a couple of looks at the cue card while you're speaking. Okay, um, Patek, um, I'm gonna, going to start you off. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so um, now I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to prepare your answers, then you will have one to two minutes to speak. Talk about a place you like going to buy groceries. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Uh, my favorite place for grocery shopping is called Migros, uh, which is a grocery store that uh, we have all over the Turkey. And uh, I have one that is really close to my dormitory, uh, which is the reason I really enjoy going there because I can go very easily and I can carry the stuff I bought uh, easily as it is really close. Um, I usually go there for buying things like um, water, bread, milk, uh, fruits, uh, things that I need uh, like in a daily basis. And um, as, I've, as I've said, um, what makes it my favorite store is uh, as it is, it is the reason that is that it is really close and uh, the stuff that works there uh, is very uh, nice and I, I enjoy going there I have uh, I have a good experience when I go there um, and if I had the chance of changing something about it maybe it would be the size of the store because the one I have close to my dormitory is a, a small one and I know there are bigger ones uh, in Turkey, so maybe having a bigger one would be uh, more convenient for me to buy 
um, more things that I need. Okay, your time is up. I'll stop you there. All right, and um, that was good. That was good. All right, so you're really paying attention to kind of the strategy um, of uh, discussing the location um, and uh, the uh, activities that happen there. Uh, so that was a great um, first go. Um, your band score would be about a seven-ish, okay? Um, but on, it's a good seven, so it would probably be like seven going towards a seven point five, uh, for sure. Okay, so on the on the stronger side of the seven, a uh, couple of points to improve. So, firstly, your answer was quite clear. Um, you definitely took the easy path. So you said Migros, and it's a chain. Um, it's all over Turkey. There's one close to your dormitory. That was a really good start. Okay, so it was very easy for me to picture it. Um, and um, uh, for your um, lexical resource, uh, you're losing marks because you're using words like things and stuff repetitively and you're repeating some of your ideas. So Patek, what you want to do is any time that you use the word things or stuff when you're practicing, stop yourself and replace it with a better word, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, let me show you. So my favorite place for grocery shopping is called Migros, which is a grocery store we have all over Turkey. We have them all over the country. So that was a, there was a bit of repetition there. I think I wrote something different. And then you said, I have one near my dormitory. I can buy all the stuff I need there. Do not use the word stuff. It's slang for things. It's one of the most useless words that we can include in our speaking. So, uh, Patek, what can I say instead of buy all the stuff that I need there? Uh, grocery for that? Yeah, uh, buy all the groceries or buy all the food, mm -hmm. right? Even food is better. Buy, I can buy all the food that I need there. Um, and then you said it has all the things I need on a daily basis. What can I use instead of things? Mm -hmm. Products, maybe? Yeah, or produce even. Products or produce, yeah. Uh, that I need on a daily basis. Produce is like your vegetables, your meat, your cheese. Okay. So it has all the produce that I need on a daily basis. Now it's much better. A um, bit of repetition again, so avoid that repetition. Um, and then you repeat it again. You said, what I have said is that what makes it really close uh, is that it's really close, right? So don't repeat yourself. Um, cool. always try to use new information when you can't use new information and you're like you're going to repeat yourself what should you do so you're like oh I'm gonna repeat myself here what should what should I do give an example but in this case I don't know yeah example would be okay look at your notes so instead of repeating look at your notes um, okay okay and it's totally okay to, to, to just pause for a few seconds, look at your notes and go, oh, there's, it's really easy parking or there's a place for me to store my bicycle safely while I go shopping, right? So you look at your notes and then you say um, they have secure bike storage. So uh, while I'm shopping, I do not have to worry about my bike getting stolen, right? So instead of repeating yourself, uh, look at your notes, okay? You don't want to repeat yourself. There's a very important reason for that. If you start to repeat yourself in part two, guess what happens, Patek, or what could happen? Uh, part three will not be so good. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but there's something else that can actually really happen at real time there. Do you know what that is? Uh, no. The examiner will just stop you. They'll say, okay, um, that's the end of part two, because they think you've run out of ideas. So there's two situations where the examiners often think that the candidate has run out of ideas and they just want to go to part three. Um, one is where you stop speaking and you're staring at the examiner with a blank face like, mm -hmm. 
then you know they'll be like okay <laughs> that's the end um, or if you just keep repeating yourself so I really like going there yeah it's definitely my favorite place I, I love this store it's just so much fun um, and then the examiner will say okay that's the end of part two <laughs> right so they'll just stop you uh, before you get way too repetitive so that's why you have to be careful to avoid that repetition too so that they don't accidentally just stop you right there okay all right um, you said the stuff is really nice. The staff. Repeat this staff. word after me, Patek. Staff. Staff. Okay. I thought the pronunciation was the same, but okay. No, it's not the same. Definitely not the same. Stuff. Okay. Stuff. Staff. Staff. Yeah. Okay. Stuff. Staff. Yeah, they're different pronunciation. Absolutely. So careful. Um, okay. Uh, otherwise, not bad. You're on the right track. So when you're practicing these part twos, Patek, record yourself, listen back anytime you hear yourself repeating, change it anytime you hear yourself saying things or stuff, replace it with a better word. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks for volunteering, Patek. Keep that up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. Bye for now. All right. That was Patek. Give Patek a thumbs up. Yeah. Um, careful with staff and stuff. Uh, one way to avoid that mistake, of course, is don't use the word stuff. Just do not use that word. Get rid of the word stuff altogether. Okay, um, let's give... I think Sarah was kind of the next on the list of volunteers. So Sarah, are you ready? All right, here we go. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Hey. How are you? I'm great. How about you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Have you done any grocery shopping lately? Yes. Uh, actually, because I live alone, I do that like all the time. Okay. Because I'm a bachelorette, I go grocery shopping all the time. All right. So this should be a cakewalk, right? Yeah. That's an idiom that means it's really easy. Uh, cakewalk. Have you have you heard this idiom before? Cakewalk? No, I tried to figure it out. It means it's really easy. Okay, so um, no pressure, right? Oh, it should be a cakewalk. Um, all right. Okay, well, let me yeah, start. Actually, I have, heard you, I have heard you saying a cakewalk. Oh, it's one word. There you go. Um, I thought it was two, but it's one word according to spell check. So cakewalk, yeah, easy. Um, okay, well, I'll start you off. Uh, Sarah, are you ready? Um, yes, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Um, so uh, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read these and think about your answers. Then you will have one to two minutes to speak. Talk about a place you like going to buy groceries. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. My favorite place to purchase uh, groceries is uh, Le Marché des Lys. It's located in Le Centre of Rennes. I have been uh, buying my groceries from the since four years since I started living alone. I go there every Saturday because uh, I go there once to twice in the month on Saturdays because it open uh, it opens every Saturday. It is exactly located in another city in Saint of of Rennes. Uh, this is one of the biggest uh, market in France. Uh, uh, started 400 years ago. I usually go there at early mornings around eight to nine because uh, eight to nine because I want to buy the freshest items from them. I go there with a big list of my uh, month items that I need, I like tomatoes, potatoes, or uh, the or meats because they provide the uh, best meats there. I do really uh, love to uh, I do really love to do shopping there because. 
uh, it's in an open area, so uh, it's like walking on a picnic and enjoying uh, buying uh, stuff. As well, there is a various of sellers, and I can get uh, the uh, many discounts. I can find the freshest fruits and uh, vegetables that I can't usually found, find in normal stores. As well, I can. Uh, have small chats with people there. They are uh, what okay, really make it a special time place. Is up. As I'm we going are going to stop you there. Please put the note paper to the side with your pencil, and now we will continue with part three. For this part, I will ask you some more questions related to your response, and some questions connected to this topic. Um, what would you change about this uh, store if you had the chance? Oh, should I answer this? Okay. Uh, if I had the opportunity to change one thing about this pocket, it would be the organiz the uh, the organization because the place is usually crowded, so it must it, it is sometimes so annoying. Okay. So I'm going to stop you there, um, Sarah. Good job. First of all, uh, great fluency. Uh, careful not to rush and try to fit as much information as possible into the uh, one to two minutes uh, because that leads to more grammatical mistakes. It can lead to information mistakes, confusion. So um, have a good idea of the information that you can fit in that one to two minutes and then stick to that don't rush don't force information because um, if you make it like a race with yourself what can happen first of all is what happened where you miss answering a question before they stop you so it just sounded to me like you know you're going to keep talking and talking and talking and there's no end to the description right yeah. excuse me um so you want to answer all of the questions first and then if you still have time you can expand but make sure you answer all the questions on the card before your time runs out okay um, and be really careful with describing unique situations like when you said that so the start of it was very good the the first half was very good the first half was like a band 7.5 the second half was like a band 6 or a 6.5 the second half of what you said was a lot more confusing so i i was clear until you said you know i go there with a big list of items that i need like potatoes tomatoes and then you said i really like to do shopping there because it's an open area it's like a picnic i can buy stuff and i'm like what does that mean what does it mean it's like a picnic like people are eating food all over the place and drinking wine in this place or like how is it a picnic right so that was a bit of a, a confusing situation for me there so i think my most important tip for you here sarah is don't rush the second half of what you're saying after you you know you finish your ideas like buying potatoes and tomatoes slow yourself down look at the questions okay what would you change about it okay so if i had the chance um i would um organize the store a bit differently so that it's not so crowded so people can walk around without uh bumping into each other okay so don't rush into the second half okay yeah don't don't worry about the time running out so that's a tip for everybody because i see that that's a common mistake it's like people worry about time running out do not worry about the time running out worry instead about answering all the questions okay yeah i'm actually was worried more about like not talking much because in my first um like try for ielts i answered all the questions but i guess uh, they were like so short my answers were so short so the examiner kept looking at me and I really was so scared of this so I was trying to make my answers longer as much as I can and you know it's not a bad idea but you have to find the balance right because um, the other situation that I hear from a lot of candidates 
is the examiner kept interrupting me. He was so rude. He just kept stopping me every time I was saying my answers. And I'm like, well, how long were your answers? And they're like, well, I just kept talking. And I'm like, well, of course they're going to interrupt you if you keep talking, right? So um, so you have to find the, the balance, right? Um, if you give very short answers, yeah, they're going to stare at you like, why? What's your reason? But if you keep talking and talking, then they will interrupt you. So you have to find that balance of answer explain stay on topic answer all the questions but don't over speak okay okay all right okay um keep it up sarah make sure to come back for the next class part three it'll be coming up in about 30 minutes okay for sure and uh, i'll stop it i want to say that i sent you i sent you an email this morning again Okay, I will um, check it out. I will check it out and I will respond. If I don't see it, I'll let you know in the next class, okay? So I'll check it out between the two classes, but if I don't see it, um, is it have your name? Like, does your email include the name Sarah in it? Yeah, somewhere? yeah, it has. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, it's Sarah. Okay, I'll look at it. If I don't see it, I'll let you know in the next class and then you can maybe try sending it from a different address, okay? Yeah, thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, Sarah. All right, that was Sarah. Uh, Sunantha Chayani, I see you there, but I'm out of time. So part three is going to start with you, okay? And I see some other volunteers there as well. Make sure to come back next class because next class we open up um, the speaking for everybody to volunteer and join in on the fun. Uh, thank you so much, um, members, uh, for the support and for the interaction. It's always a pleasure to hear your thoughts and your English and your answers. So it was lovely to have you in this class and I hope that you come back for the next class, which is in 30 minutes. Until then, everybody, check out aehelp.com. That's what we are using in this class for the speaking, as well as giltshelp.com for the general IELTS, okay? I'm going to be back in uh, 30 minutes, even a little bit less um, for uh, more speaking practice, more tips and strategies, more vocabulary. So come back and learn with me. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out from Victoria for now. Bye everybody.